there are some lies in our science books. Taught it for 15 years. Even though I'm not teaching it anymore, I still like to study. It's so many neat things to learn. And we're going to cover some of that tonight. Perception is being managed. We are being steered and guided by a hidden hand. The whole world has been duped by the media that is not real. <laughs> smart thinking, possible time traveler, smart thinking. That night, boom, contact memory. And then just, Alex, if you don't agree, you'll be sent to a re-education camp. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I've lost my touch with the ladies. Experts are suggesting that we're in a golden age of shape-shifting reptilian sightings. Now, why is that? I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research. It was most definitely not capable of melting steel. Then I would be a crackpot if I thought that was that was the, the case. Thought that was that was the, the case. Welcome to the Hypothetical Institute, a podcast about conspiracies. My name is Luke. I'm Salty. I'm Cam. How are we, boys? Yeah. Good. 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 What was with your little, my name is Luke? Oh, I don't know. I, I think I've got a sort of a rhythmic thing going with it sometimes. <laughs> and I, I don't want to do it, but right. I, I launch into it and yeah. it starts. All right. Before we begin the episode, we would like to thank Tom, our $33 sponsor on Patreon. Yep. Or Patreon. Uh, off mic, I did Tom in uh, both uh, Pythagorean and Chaldean numerology. Yeah, mm -hmm. only adds up to twelve and fourteen. So yeah. yeah, and also off mic, we did say that twelve does then go down to three. Yeah, yeah. and one four minus one is three. Is three. Okay, now That's fair point. Thirty-three. Yeah. So Tom, Robert needs to overthink this more. <laughs> we're on to you, Tom. Yeah. Uh, but thanks for supporting us. Yeah. yeah. Thanks to everyone. If you want to jump on patreon and throw us a little bit of support we would love it you can subscribe for three dollars 33 and join button club mm -hmm. get a bit of extra content every week have those gone out yet why would you ask me that on the mic because <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna mail them tomorrow okay cut all that yeah, well, make me look like a fucking shit <laughs> uh, sorry i thought they had <laughs> so you can uh, blah, blah. Fucker. Sorry. You can chuck us three dollars thirty three. Join Button Club. Get a new button every now and again. We'll throw out some new designs. Yep. You can chuck us six dollars sixty six and join Button Club and also get one of these swanky, cool enamel pins like Cam's wearing that no one else can see. Yep, I've been complimented on mine numerous times. Excellent. Uh, or if you're as cooked as Tom, you can throw us thirty three dollars. And become a show sponsor, a show little, patron. A little mm. mystery box. Yeah. Some cool stuff coming Tom's way. Yeah. We're, we're slowly stockpiling a cool little box of stuff. All right. Shall we begin the episode? Yeah. What's on the old agenda, buddy? Uh, this week, we're just going to be talking about one topic. Oh, it's got to be a good one then. It's a big one. It's a famous Australian case, uh, the Azaria Chamberlain disappearance who was a nine-week-old baby who disappeared in august of 1980 at uluru or as we called it at the time airs rock mm. that's when it was okay to be racist people still call it airs rock don't they they yeah. do and they still walk on the rock mm. even though there are signs up saying not to walk on the rock mm. And uh, there also there were signs up at the time that this happened saying not to feed the dingoes Ooh. And people still fed the dingoes. And what we'll find uh, as we talk about the Azaria Chamberlain case is that people should listen to those signs yeah. because the ones of it, like the ones about not climbing on the rock, uh, you know, for spiritual reasons, mm -hmm. and it's to show respect to the local people and their traditions, but also it's a dangerous body rock. Yeah, it's a big one. But as it turned out, good news for Lindy Chamberlain, how dangerous it was. Yes. But let's uh, let's start at the beginning. Sure. 
So it is August 17, 1980. Uh, Lindy and Michael Chamberlain, who uh, were a couple of Seventh-day Adventists. Hence the Seventh-day Adventist chat at the start of the show. Yep. They go camping with their children, Aiden, six, Reagan, four, and Azaria, who was nine weeks old. And they're camping near the rock in the centre of the Australian desert. I guess, yeah, for, for any listeners overseas, the big red rock that you've seen on the postcards yeah. or on TV. Every time someone does like an Australian bit, I'm sure that's in the mix somewhere. Yeah. Dingo ate my baby. We're, yeah, not, so we're, not, we're not there that bit yet, but okay. <laughs> well, we're about to get there. So on uh, August 16, they arrived at the, uh, the campground. Uh, they went the next morning. Michael and the boys went for a climb on the rock, which you're not supposed to do. It probably wasn't a, much of a thing back then. No, probably. Yeah, it would be harder. I think it's a bit of a cause celeb these days. Mm. Probably, if you were to say it back then, they'd be like, "Oh, come on, pack <laughs> a few racial slurs in." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and Lindy took his area to see a formation called Fertility Cave. Okay. And while they were there, she did happen to see a dingo looking hungrily at her and the baby, which she thought was not great. Mm. Uh, She would later tell the police that she felt like the dingo was casing the baby out. Mm. Uh, That night, they uh, went for a barbecue with other campers. So this is the night of the incident. Uh, Lindy had Azaria in her arms. Uh, they chatted with some other people that were there. Uh, Greg and Sally Lowe. We'll hear a little bit about them later. They were also on holiday with a little kid. About eight o'clock, uh, Sally Lowe went to a rubbish bin to get rid of some stuff. And she saw a dingo following her. A little bit later, uh, Michael threw a crust of bread to a dingo that was hanging around and was told not to encourage them. And there were signs up around the place saying not to encourage them because, as we'll find out later, there had been a rash of incidents mm. involving dingoes and small children. And this like, this still happens today in different parts of Australia, right? Like, there's the dingoes on um, Fraser Island yeah. that are just being fed by idiots constantly mm. and end up biting idiots. <laughs> and the people are like, oh, the dingoes, we have to kill them. It's like, no, just fucking stop feeding them and they'll go back to ignoring people. Mm. They were famously placid. I think, like, outside of people feeding them. Yeah, well, generally they're, like, they're, they wouldn't come near people. Mm. Well, yeah, so the problem with feeding them is that, because they're wild animals, the ones that get fed become comfortable with humans, mm. but they're still wild. They're still wild. Yeah. So but they have a, that combination of being wild and tame that just makes them dangerous to be around people. Mm. Yeah. The, they're not the sort of tame where you can have them hanging around. They're not dogs. Mm. They're actually not dogs. Mm. I went to a dingo, to a dingo sanctuary like a week and a half ago. Really? Yeah. yeah you've been keeping this, this from us. Yeah. Like there's a there's one north of Melbourne, north west, where they have dingo puppies, mm. and you can go and like play with the dingo puppies. Did you play with the dingo puppy? Yeah, I did. It's great. You learn all about why they're not dogs and about what makes them different, and it's good. Do they, a bit about conservation. Do they address any of this stuff there? Well, when a couple... This is the second time I've been and... Do they have like a little thing on the wall, like the, the time the dingoes won? No, well, <laughs> I'm... When another time, about two or three years ago, and I'm... From memory, I'm sure I remember them talking about it, but I can't remember in what context. You'd almost... They almost need a sign that they can just point to. Yeah. No, we're not talking about it. Yeah. Because <laughs> like... Everyone wants to know about it. This time they mostly just talked about 1080 baiting and stuff like that. And oh, yeah. it's fucking them up. Yeah. But yeah, not dogs. Mm. So uh, at that point, so you know, it's getting later into the evening, uh, time to put Azaria to bed. So she said to the group, um, it's time to put Bubby down. Uh, went back to the tent and put her in the bed. Her brother Reagan was asleep. Uh, about 10 minutes later, uh, she went back to the rest of the campers. Then she heard a baby's cry and she went back to investigate 
And when she went in, she saw that something had been in the tent and baby Zeria was gone. And that is when... Uh, and I, I think she's supposed to have seen the dingo, right? She saw a mm. dingo running away. Yeah. Mm. And she cries out the famous line, <coughs> My God, my God, the dingo's got my baby. Yep. Hilarious bloody line. Seinfeld. Yeah, Seinfeld kicked it off. Yeah, The Simpsons. The, I did watch a, a thing, it might have been a New York Times video, where they talked about how the court of public opinion has, like, is people know her from that, like, particularly in America. So they just assume it's a big joke and she was clearly guilty. Yeah. Because otherwise, why would you joke about such a horrible thing? Uh, yeah. See, and the weird thing is, the next line's much funnier because uh, it's just a fart. Well, no, <laughs> cause, uh, an, an investigator arrived, Frank Morris, and he looks in the tent and he sees that there's uh, blood on the on the ground. There's paw prints in the tent, and um, the little brother Aiden is crying, and he says, uh, "The dingo's got." The dingo has our bubby in its tummy. Oof. Now, wouldn't that be a funnier line yeah. to do all the jokes about? Yeah. No. This, it's dumb, about- this dumb little kid. <laughs> Are there any other really tragic losses of life that have a that happen that have a fucking very very intensely ingrained catch pop phrase. cultural catchphrase in it? I don't know. I don't think so. There's not, is there? No, I'm sure there is. Um, oh. The, a plane's hit the towers. The Hindenburgs, probably. Oh, the humanity. Yep, that's one. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Who said that? The Hindenburg, when it crashed, and the, the radio man. Oh, the humanity. Yeah, but who said it? Uh, Johnny, Ra- Johnny Radio Johnny man. Radio Man. I don't know. I've never heard of that. It's oh. a famous thing. Yeah, it's no, a famous It can't thing. be too famous. It's very, 100% the, famous. I love very the Hindenburg. Famous. I've never I, I'd almost before. say it's more famous than Dingo at my baby. Yeah, no, I don't know about that. But this guy claims that he's a massive Hindenburg stan. Yeah, since when are you such a big Hindenburg? It's cool, I like it. Oh, I enjoy seeing the epic footage. All right. It's a bit rough. Like, of it flying and shit. Yeah, yeah. The actual crashing of it is pretty horrific. Yeah, yeah. Which is why there's a famous... <laughs> Look it up. When you, I, I reckon when you'll hear it, you go, oh, that thing. Yeah, right. Okay. So, any listeners, at us... Who, who thinks that's more famous than a dingo's got my baby? Oh, I've, I've, I'm not going to like the acts you're going to get. Mate. Yeah, I've even seen memes of that, and it's a manatee. It's oh the huma- huge manatee crashing. It's another one with uh, Hugh Grant. I think he's thrusting, and it's like, oh the Hugh Grantity. It was a big thing for a while there. Yeah, yeah. well, there's a lot of oh the humanity memes, and it's a very famous. Line. I should describe some more if you like. Fair enough. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry about it. So. <laughs> A whole bunch of people start looking for the dingo, for the baby. Uh, this will come up later, but Michael famously does not join them, saying that... Who's uh, Michael in this one again? He's the father. He says she's probably already dead. Jesus. And uh, he makes... I've seen the next quote written in a few different ways, but basically, because he's a very religious person, I think he was a minister within the Seventh-day Adventist church. But he basically makes the point, you know, God's will has been has been done. You know, what what has happened has happened. What, Which is <sighs> what a low opinion you have of your God, if you're like, oh, five minutes ago I killed my baby, God's will. I, I don't know if it's like that. I think they're just very intensely <laughs> religious people. Oh, okay, so that's cool. And I think he was aware, quite correctly, that his baby was dead. No, it, you hate your hope. You don't just give up. I don't, I don't want to judge someone whose baby's just died. Why well, have hope when you have faith? Yeah, fair point. There was, I think there's also some other suggestions of what he might have been doing. Like he could have been like coordinating with people that weren't out searching or something. Mm. But he gets really thrown under the bus for not going out looking Yeah. Uh, later on down the track. So they did turn up dingo tracks. Uh, another tourist, Murray Haby, followed uh, tracks of a dingo and noticed like depressions on the ground where it had like put something down Ooh. for a bit, yep. something perhaps baby-sized. 
Uh, they got a native tracker out <clears throat> whose name was Nui Min Yintiri, and they saw that uh, the there was like it looked like the clothes of a baby, like uh, pressed down on the ground. Mm. So then they got the cops out, and all the cops were like, "Yep," because everyone there is like, "Yep, fair enough, dingo." Been these fucking dingoes have been around the whole time we've been here. Mm. Makes sense. Mm. Uh, it's, you know, it's not the no one's been out of our sight murdering people. Let's go find this bloody dingo. Cops arrive. Uh, I think there were four of them. Three out of the four were like, "Yep, let's find this dingo." The fourth one was like, no, I don't think a dingo would do that. <laughs> was that cop a dingo? <laughs> well, <you> Where <laughs> dingo? <laughs> Just, well, officer dingo, maybe you're right. <laughs> so there hadn't been any fatal dingo attacks in the area before, mm. but there had been a bunch of attacks on children. Mm. Uh, so the cop that uh, didn't think that it was a dingo... He didn't think it was likely that uh, a dog could carry a 10-pound baby for as far as it would have. Right. Not a dog, but it's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he needed to go to the sanctuary. Yeah. So to prove his point, he went and got a bucket of sand that weighed 10 pounds and put it in his mouth. And he... So hang on. He Are we saying he wasn't a dingo or he was? Cause <laughs> <it's>... <laughs> well, here's the thing. He's not a dingo because he couldn't carry it for more than a few minutes. Ah, okay. And he's like, if I, per- a, a human <laughs> with my fucking strong human jaw, yeah. can't carry this bucket for, you know, more than a few minutes, how could a dingo with its weak little dog jaw carry it? Which is fucking stupid. It's how a- old was this baby? It was nine, nine weeks, weeks old. Right, that's a tiny baby. Yeah, 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 and yeah, but it was like ten pounds. Which I, is, I, have I have no, no idea of what ten pounds is. I don't know what it is, but it's not that heavy. <laughs> okay, you, just like, you know, ten pounds. <laughs> you know, ten, ten, ten pounds. How much is ten pounds? I don't know. In not very kilograms. much. God, there's someone can listening you, going. Can you look it up, Robo? Ten lbs to kg. Four and a half kilo. That's not very. It's not very heavy. Yeah. But to be fair, it's quite heavy to carry a bucket of sand. Of that much in your mouth, especially because like weight distribution, the weight distribution is across the you bit know, of the, wire, a bit of wire or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's the stupidest comparison you can make. Yeah. Cause for one, for one thing, they're not dogs. What, what's everyone else doing when he's doing the sand thing? Like, they're, they're all standing around being like, Oh, that's a good point. Like, yeah. You're just like, you idiot. What are you doing? What if you had a bucket with a slightly wider handle that would be less stress on the one yeah. point of your teeth? <laughs> yeah. Let's go get a chicken. Yeah. Let's go get a bloody chicken. 10 pound let's grab a turkey yeah but put a put a jacket on it I do feel like a dingo would have a much stronger mouth than a human right yeah, yeah I imagine dingo's got pretty but that doesn't really seem salty. yeah hmm? he also challenged the other officers to see if they could beat him in the little the bucket game so <laughs> just wanted them to make it a game yeah you want to know something interesting about dingoes yeah should I just pepper this whole thing with Please interesting do. factoids about dingoes now and then yeah when they fall, they're like cats. Right. So when they get off balance, their brain produces serotonin rather than adrenaline. Nice little high. So they, they took one of the dingoes, like a youngish one, mm. and like hung it upside down. Mm. And it just like laid there. It's just right. like hung there upside down, really placid. Then they just flopped it and it went whoop, and landed like a cat. Cool. Whereas a normal dog... Fucking, it loses the balance and they just like flip out and go mental. Yeah. Yeah. Huh, there you go. Pretty good. Thank you. So a week later, a guy called Wally Goodwin, who was uh, photographing wild flowers, happened upon the clothes of his area, right. which had been, they, they hadn't been ripped. There was like a, a, it seemed like they'd been cut and there was no baby inside, obviously. Uh, the, Police arrived, uh, moved them before they photographed them, and then mm-hmm. took some photos of them. Classic 80s cops. Yeah. yeah. Classic officer dingo. Yeah. So, August 28th, uh, new cop, Graham Charlwood, takes over the investigation. Uh, he's going off the notes of the uh, suspicious cop. Yep. yep. Uh, which had also included a few little bits of information. For example, uh, that cop, whose name was Gilroy had talked to Lindy Chamberlain's doctor, who'd been very suspicious 
when Azaria had been brought in for a checkup because she was dressed all in black. A little black dress. Yes. Strange clothes indeed for a baby. He'd also thought that uh, Azaria was a bit of a weird name. So he'd gone to his dictionary of names. Mm-hmm. You know, that famous dictionary that yep. all doctors should have. Yep. And discovered that Azaria meant sacrifice in the wilderness. Whoa. Uh, which it does not. No. <laughs> It means uh, one whom God aids. Mm. But uh, that, yeah, that sacrifice in the wilderness thing really stuck in the uh, sort of popular consciousness. At what point is someone making this up, do we think? Like, does this doctor actually exist or is this... I think so. I think this was the actual doctor saying this stuff, but he was just talking shit. Right. Like, maybe he was misremembering. Because this is not... They're not talking about... I mean, I guess they're talking about something that happened in the previous nine weeks. But, yeah. Also, is, is, I mean... Maybe he did have a crazy dictionary that just had all the wrong names yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> he bought a baby book of savers. Yeah. <laughs> it was a weird cooked one that someone threw out. Um, is black really that weird a thing to put your baby in? Look, in, the, in the 80s, you fucking stylish? It is a little bit weird. Is it though? Yeah. I, so I, I like looked up. Black dresses. Mm. And I'm not saying it's evidence of anything at all. Fucking look at Mr. Boys wear blue, girls wear pink yeah. over here. Well, like, I guess, have you ever seen a baby in a black dress? I don't see many babies. Well, I have. Next time I, you see babies. I did a Google image, baby in black dress, and there were a lot of babies. I and see, they were all looking very stylish. There wasn't that many, I didn't think. I thought I thought I was going to get more, and I looked at them and, oh, actually, there's not that many. I'm seeing a lot of repeat babies in this Google image. All right. Well, the thing about the black dress was it was like a hand-me-down from one of the brothers. Mm. Uh, oh, interesting. I think that it originally was not a dress. I okay. think it was originally some sort of romper or something. Yeah. Uh, in Lindy Chamberlain's book, she writes about taking the baby out in the black dress that she'd repurposed from a previous outfit. And she was wearing a matching outfit. So she and oh, the baby were colour-coordinated. Yeah. yeah. Stalin. Yeah. Yeah. And I will just say this. Given that it was the 80s and a famously daggy decade, mm-hmm. Lindsay Chamberlain was very stylish. Oh, good on her. Yeah. I'm not going to comment on her style choices in the modern day. Why? <laughs> are, are you throwing shade? Just a little bit of shade. Yeah, jeez. Somewhere along the way, she lost her, some of her style. Well, I mean, she was stylish in the 80s. Oh. Do you, well, like if she dressed what, like she did then now, would she still be as stylish? If she dressed... What, then, like she did now, she would look like she fit into the eighties. Yeah, right, right. Uh, but no, she. So she talks in her she's book. Had a about, rough life. Yeah, oh, all right. Jeez, prison's fucking a hell of a place. Yeah, it's not but, like um, she's bloody Coco Chanel. All right, I don't want to go on about style too much. No, you brought it up, <laughs> bitchy camo. Yeah, yeah. but um, she talks in her book about oh, taking wow. the Paris baby Hilton. <laughs> out in the black dress, yeah, and having a mixed response. Okay, and people either loved it. Or hated it. Mm. Yeah. See? It's enough to be a strange thing. Uh, there was also a comment in the cop's notes that uh, just because she'd been seen carrying a bundle around uh, in the evening did not necessarily mean that there was, she was carrying a baby. That's she, a good thing to assume straight away. She could have just been carrying a bundle around to trick everyone. Mm. So you, she might have killed the baby earlier. Yeah. Well, that was the... I'm probably slightly leaping here, but that was always the uh, case. Was she killed the baby a lot earlier? Right. In, or, in the car. Yeah, sort of. I mean, I think the idea was that she was supposed to have killed the baby when she went to like put it down. She killed it in the car and then they were supposed to have disposed of the body while the search was going on. Mm. It was like the police theory when they eventually do prosecute, which we'll get to. But... Uh, they send off all of the clothing and things to different laboratories to be tested. Uh, they do not find any dingo saliva on the clothes that they found. And the tears in the clothes are perhaps not consistent with what a dingo would do. They do tests at a zoo where they like, I think they wrapped some meat in uh, similar clothing so what the dingoes in the zoo did, mm-hmm. and they sort of they rip it apart. Mm-hmm. But um, they should have used some sand. A bucket of sand would probably be a <laughs> yeah. more accurate representation. There's um sort of some there's some different schools of thought on it. Well, we'll see what the correct school of thought is eventually because 
uh, there's a local, there was a local dingo expert who was like, no, dingoes in the wild are completely different from a dingo in the zoo because a dingo in the wild has to compete for its food. So it doesn't have time to be slowly pulling something apart to get it the meat. Mm. It's they, they can very, they can do some nuanced, uh, peeling back yeah. of things and they're not mm. interested in eating a baby's clothes. They mm. all carry switch blades. Get it out. Uh, the other thing they find on uh, the baby's clothes is like a handprint, like a bloody handprint. Ooh. This is looking more and more like Officer Dingo did it. Yeah. Uh, it's at this point that the media really starts to get involved. Uh, there's a lot of <laughs> suspicions about the Seventh Day Adventist Church, which I guess in the 80s was not that well known in Australia. Is it that well known in the whatever we're in now? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Do, do you know much about them? No. They're, um, they're, they're in that space in my mind where, like, there's a lot of those little kind of churches. Mm. They could be cooked. They could just be Christians. I don't know. I went the, to school with a girl who was Seventh-day Adventist. That's yeah. the only one I've ever come across ever in my life. They, um, they own Sanitarium, oh, yeah. a cereal company. Uh, the Kellogg guy, the guy that started Kellogg's, was a Seventh-day Adventist. Are so they big into cereal then? They, the- no, they are massively... This is the thing. They're massively into cereal and like healthy living. They do the Sabbath on a Saturday. They're trying to compete with the Quakers. Mm. Yeah, that's the, bi- <laughs> the big rivalry. <laughs> From what I can gather, they were formed in like the 1800s. And one of their first... They started off with like a big prediction about uh, the end of the world and the return of Jesus. Always a good way to start a religion. And it was supposed to happen in like 1843 or something. Yep. Didn't happen. Mm. Now, when, when that happened, when your prophecy doesn't happen like that, you can go in a few different ways. Everyone can just knock themselves off. Or you can like... <laughs> As we've talked about in previous episodes. Yeah. <laughs> or you can just wrap it up. Yeah. Or you can do what they did, which was the clever thing to do and say, oh, we got the prophecy wrong. Yeah. Uh, Jesus isn't coming back. He's just like ascended to like another stage of heaven, which, you know, we won't necessarily see. Heaven 2. Yeah, he's gone to heaven Mm 2.0. Heaven 2 is actually a club in Adelaide. Really? (laughs) He's gone to heaven 2, hanging out on Rundle Mall. (laughs) It's at the end of Heinle Street. (laughs) He's uh, dealing pingers. It might not not still be there. But yeah, they sort of worked it in. And yeah, it's... They they pivoted. I like it. They don't really Mm. have... Like, they've got some slightly kooky views, but they're not... They're just very, very devout mm. yeah. people who are interested in healthy living and, I guess, keep to themselves. Ooh. So, the perfect people for Australians. They're not the Watchtower people, are they? No, that's the Jehovah's Witnesses. That's right. Yeah. But yeah, the perfect sort of people for Australians to hate. Ethnic. <laughs> uh, David Koresh's group, <laughs> the, the Branch Davidians, yeah. are a split from okay. the Seventh-day Adventists. And there was actually an Australian uh, guy at the Koresh compound. So that, a few years later that happened. Mm. But that sort of got um, suggested that maybe that was connected in the... Like, that could have something to do with it. Right. That was in the 90s, I think. Yeah, the yeah. Koresh thing. But uh, so newspapers started rumours that uh, the child had been sacrificed, which makes sense with the sacrifice in the wilderness name, the black dress... Uh, Lindy Chamberlain didn't really, she she was really judged for the way that she appeared in the media. Mm. Uh, she, I guess she didn't really cry. She, she said that, you know, she had this problem with the media and also in a trial where if she cried, she was faking. And if she just talked, she was showing no emotion. Mm. Mm. I, f- I find that really weird that there's a lot of cases where people are like, oh, that person's obviously guilty. You look at them, they're not upset. Mm. It's like when you go through like a massive traumatic event, your body does weird shit. Yeah. You, you go up and down. Yeah. And particularly if you're being interviewed on TV, you're probably just going to like just straight face it. Yeah. And sometimes mm. your brain just comes in and goes, it's all right, I've got this. Yeah. Throws up some walls yep. and you just get through what you need to do. And then later on, you <clears throat> everything falls apart. Mm. But yeah. like people can also cry on their own when there's not cameras there. Yeah. Mm. I watched the Netflix doco on Amanda Knox. Oh, yeah. mm. And that was a big thing they went on about her. Like, yeah. look how weird she's acting. Her friend's just been killed. It's like 
She's just standing yeah. around. She's not doing anything. And her friend has been killed. Of course, she's acting somewhat weird. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, also, yeah, the things that Michael Chamberlain had said about you know, God's will, etc., mm. did not help. Uh, the cop interviews them. A lot of then they sort of had a difficult relationship with the police because they, I guess, they're grieving and all these forensic tests kept on getting leaked to the press that didn't make them look very good mm. and so they were a bit sus on the cops uh, and the cops got really sus on them when Lindy Chamberlain refused to be hypnotised uh, very fucking good call <laughs> the famously like dodgy signs of hypnotism but she had like a serious re- religious objection to it she said uh, the church wouldn't allow it and I wouldn't do it God slew Saul for that do you know Saul and the Witch of Endor? I don't. I kind of want to know it, though. Yeah. Isn't that where the Ewoks are from? <laughs> it was. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, uh, there's a coroner's inquest where the coroner finds it was obviously the dingo. Mm. Like, no shit. People saw dingoes hanging around. There'd be, a dingo had pulled a child out of a car a few weeks previous and dragged it along. Mm hmm. Uh, How old was that kid, did it say? I think that kid might have been like three or something. Right. So quite a bit. So a dingo was able to drag a three-year-old along the ground, but they reckon it couldn't pick up a nine-week-old. Mm. Mm. Good one, cops. <laughs> you bucket of sand. Yeah. Get a, th- a bucket of sand that weighs the same as a three-year-old and watch it snap your teeth off. <laughs> oh. I like it. Yeah, so they do the first inquest and, uh, yeah, they determine it was a dingo. Um... The cops were not too happy with that. Officer Dingo's fuming. Yeah. His uh, tail starts wagging furiously. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so there's a few, a few more inquests happen and eventually there is a second inquest and they conclude that it's likely that Lindy killed the baby. They do take their car and they find blood in the front seat sort of well. Uh, that's consistent with a baby's blood. So up until like six months old, I think babies still have like fetal blood in them. Mm. And so they do tests which are consistent with that. There's also a blood spatter pattern in the car, which is suggestive of the baby's throat being cut. So the police decide to charge her. It goes to trial and... Everybody expects her to be found innocent, and then she's found guilty. The evidence you just presented, if I was on the jury, I'd probably say she was guilty as well. Mm. Mm. The blood spatter, though, was later thought to be chocolate milk. Right. Yeah, um, so this is the thing. they She's found guilty based on some expert evidence. Uh, one of the bits of expert evidence is this uh, forensic scientist from the UK... Famous home of the dingo expert in mm-hmm. the United Kingdom, who determined that it was not likely to have been uh, done by a dingo. Mm-hmm. The clothes ripped. Uh, there was the question of the saliva, that there not being any saliva on the clothes. Uh, the local dingo expert says, also said that uh, dingoes in the wild generally don't spit that everywhere. much. They don't drool that much when they're yeah. eating. But never mind what he thinks. Yeah. Uh, there was the handprint on the clothes which did not match Lindy Chamberlain's hand at all. Yeah. And it was probably dust rather than blood. <laughs> mm. And there was also the the blood in the car, which, yeah, could well have been chocolate milk. And there was also the, the blood spatter, which they discovered later when they someone involved in the investigation was looking at, like, another car of the same make and noticed that it had the same spatter pattern. Right. Uh, it was just part of the... Texture of the... Vinyl or something. It was just like part of the production process. They sprayed some sort of thing on. Oh, right. And it was on a bunch of these cars. The exact same thing. I think we need to question who's spraying blood yeah. when, they're, when they're doing the interiors here. So, but yeah, based on the idea that they, they found this baby blood in the car and this expert from the UK, she was found guilty. If I then had heard the explanation of all that blood stuff at a appeal I would have said she wasn't guilty mm. 
So you would be a good juror. Lindy Chamberlain is sentenced to jail. I think Michael Chamberlain is also charged and found guilty as an accessory to murder. He doesn't really get much run in this whole thing, does he? No. It's just an afterthought, mostly. I think he did... At the time? Anyway, anyway, all of their appeals fail. They Mm. they appeal it and appeal it, and it goes all the way. So it's one of those things where the entire justice system actually failed. Because it gets to the end of the the appeals process, and they're still in jail. Then they get lucky, because some random dude is climbing Ayers Rock a few years later and falls. Oh. Into like a area with a bunch of dingo dens. Yeah, they said it was like just dingo lairs everywhere where he, where he fell. Yeah. So while they're looking for his sounds body, terrifying, by yeah. the way. Yeah. While they're looking for his body, they find the jacket that the baby had been wearing. This was uh, Lindy Chamberlain's explanation for why there was no dingo saliva on the clothes. She said, "Well, she was wearing a jacket." Mm. And they find the jacket. Right. And that, and combined with a whole heap of other <laughs> evidence that she was clearly innocent, which was sort of there from the very beginning. Yeah. Mm. Uh, eventually, there's a huge push for there to be a royal commission. And finally, uh, the government has to release her from prison. She's pardoned, but she's not exonerated. Mm. They just pardon her. And eventually, there's some more inquests. I think by about the fourth inquest in the early 2000s, they finally get the... Death certificate changed to death by dingo. It's a good band name. Hmm. Yeah. Probably a bit on the nose, so. Uh, I guess these, we've just. Is there any less on the nose than chucking, a dingo's got my baby in everything? Yeah, no, fair point. Fair point. Death by dingo. Fucking some sort of outback Aussie thrush band. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I said early 2000s. I should say the early 2010s. In 2012. Yeah, it was not that long ago. In 2012, they finally. <laughs> Got the uh, the death stupid fixed. Um, the you talk about the media and things being leaked to the media and all that. Mm. There's a sort of a strong case, and this is kind of a famous case of why media shouldn't report on issues of a crime because by the time it got to trial, everyone knew about it, mm. and everyone just assumed she was guilty. Yeah, uh, and then it, she ended up being guilty. Yeah, there's not much you could sway someone. That's what, oh, going back to that Amanda Knox thing. Mm. Have you seen it? Uh, I don't think I have, no, but I'm, I'm familiar with the case. They're, so they talked to one of the lead journalists from the UK who was reporting on it in Italy at the time. And he's just talking about how they would just get any bit of information and just run with the most sensational headlines. Mm. So there was a photo of her on holiday somewhere sitting behind a fake machine gun smiling and so then they pl- they showed all these headline front newspapers and it's just like death sex orgies <laughs> with her sitting at a machine gun the press are fucking scumbags yeah oh, it's a bit rough. <clears throat> it, when it comes to that kind of shit <laughs> that but i guess the like the low if we're talking about like the circles of hell when it comes to the press there's that and then probably lower than that is like the beer press mm, yeah mm. I mean, I don't get to beer, I do spirits as well. Yeah, and wine. Yeah. yeah, the gin press is yeah. right in the middle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the New York Times thing, so, thing I watched said, uh, basically, all that people knew about it in the US, for example, was it was foreign people with funny accents. Yeah. Um, which I thought was a bit mean to the Australian accent, but there you go. Yeah, so I, I think I watched the same thing as you. One of the big things was that uh, people didn't like to think that they were wrong. Yeah. So they had all these experts who like wouldn't not consider anything besides what they'd first come up with. Mm. Yeah, like this that one cop who just got an idea into his head at the very beginning of the thing, and what didn't follow the evidence properly. Mm. Because there was also there was a bit of racism involved. There was a one of the tracker the tracker who found the you know the imprint of the clothing on the ground. His testimony couldn't be used in court because he. There was some sort of issue where a man was testifying on behalf of his wife. The indigenous, this indigenous guy was testifying on behalf of his wife, but in their sort of his sort of culture, they when you were saying something, someone else's story, you would still say it in the first person, mm. and so they, that couldn't be admitted, right? Even though this is you know someone's gone out there and seen where the baby <laughs> was put down. Yeah, right. And so, stuff like this, like professor from the UK, who's 
opinion on what had happened was considered more credible than this random guy mm. from the town who knew had been like watching these dingoes for 10 years and <laughs> knew what they were like. Um, do we want to talk about who else was in the or near Uluru at the time? Yeah, I think we should get onto that. Yeah. So this is a very recent video that we watched. That's August. August th- the 5th. This is, it's not got a lot of traction. No. This video's got, I think it's got like 40,000 views. It's probably so about on par with one of our episodes. Yeah, about about the same. <laughs> yep. Um, no, uh, it hasn't really taken off. I feel like you're going to hear about this again, though. Mm. You heard it here first. You heard yeah, it here yeah. first, or unless you watched this video already. Yeah. yeah, unless you're one of the forty times more people <laughs> watch this video than are going to listen to this, uh, because it's based in a, like a nugget of truth, and it really pushes a lot of their buttons. Mm. 1980, Uluru. Who should only be swanning about but fucking Marino Brnovich? Yeah, yeah. The the famous spirit cooker, the the witch, one of the three head witches, mm. along with Meryl Streep and Hillary Clinton. Yep. Who is yeah, the top of global witchcraft and is yeah tied into the Podesta thing and Pizza mm. Gate and everything. Mm. She was in Uluru for all of 1980. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With Ule. With Ule? Was that her husband? Her partner, yeah. Yeah. At the time. That were performing artists. Is she um, still a performing artist? Is yeah. That, that's yeah. what her spirit cooking yeah, is, yeah. basically, right? Yeah. Um, so the artwork they, they kind of conceived during that time mm. was them staring across each other mm. uh, at each other from a long table. Yeah. yeah. It's their famous long table sit stare. Yeah, that it's one. It's called Night Sea Crossing. There you go. Um, behind them or sort of in the background when you see pictures of it there is a picture of them too she's wearing a black dress and he's wearing something red I think mm. uh, mirroring the colours of the Lindy and uh, Azaria Banks dresses yeah Azaria Chamberlain Azaria <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been thinking about Azalea Banks this whole thing yeah trying not to say it and there it is that's why I haven't said her name yeah and I'd Try it once and here I am. Yeah. Mirroring the dress they wore once. Yeah. Like it wasn't even at the time. Not a, not even yeah. when this happened. Um there was also, I think, in the middle of the table, a boomerang. Boomerang some gold. Yeah. And a snake. Yeah. Uh the kind of thing if you're doing some cook performance art you're gonna put in there. Yeah. Um well, especially because that's it's based on they just spent a year in the outback yeah, yeah. back cooking this up. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, you could have, you didn't even have to be together. You could have done this over the phone. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, so you notice I mentioned uh, Meryl Streep as the third head witch. Mm. Uh, guess who played? Lindy Chamberlain in the movie Evil Angels. It was called something else here as well, uh, overseas as well. I think it was called Evil Angels Overseas. Yeah. And it called something else here. Yeah. Whatever the, the so she's the one that uttered the line. Mm. Dingo. Took my baby. Yeah, she's the one that made it famous. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I've, then this video goes on to, uh, I guess, uh, say outright, I was going to say imply, but say outright that even though Meryl Streep's heavily involved in the arts, um, her husband, I think, or her partner is a famous artist or is involved in the arts quite heavily, mm. they're always at art gallery openings. There is no photos of her and Abramovich together yeah. at all. You will never see one. They don't want to be pictured together. Yeah. Mm. So if you uh, if you were to Google image it though, the very first result is of Meryl Streep and Marina Abrev looking yeah. at each other. Yeah. <laughs> Literally the top result. So, all right. There's a is few that something someone's cobbled together though, or is that a real photo? That's no, a real photo. It's a real photo. Okay. It's from a literary gala. Right. 2017, pre this video. So yeah, the point that this guy makes is that Marina Abrev- Abramovich was in Uluru throughout 1980. She and Lindy Chamberlain have sacrificed this baby. Yep. yep. And that the performance art piece, the famous staring one, the point of it is for her and Ule to be remembering how great it was to murder that baby. Uh, he does make a bunch of claims in it. Uh, quote, they never recovered anything. They never recovered booties, shoes, a dress, nothing. They did recover all of that. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, he says uh, that he can't find them in a picture together. You can find them. Maybe if you don't use duck, duck, go. Yeah, he's definitely duck, duck, going <laughs> he it did. up here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was annoying. I was using Bing to search for some of this stuff. Yep. Don't, don't use Bing. Why Bing. are you using Bing? 
had you just reinstalled Skype or something and forgot to uncheck the thing that automatically makes that your search engine? There was a guy I used to work with whose computer, for some reason, wouldn't let him, his work computer, wouldn't let him change the default browser to, <laughs> um, or the default search to Chrome right. to Google. Uh, and so you're stuck binging it. <laughs> uh, he said about the art piece, he doesn't get it. He says, I don't understand why they're, all, the, all these people are standing around. Because there's a bunch of photos of them doing the piece. Yeah. And she does like similar pieces where just random people will come in and do the staring with her. Yeah. Mm. He's like, why is this interesting? It's like, well, it's, it's wanky performance art. Yeah. It's interesting these, to those people. These motherfuckers need to go to art galleries. Like, yeah. I, I've seen my fair share of wanky performance art. Mm. And this shit is very tame compared yeah. to some of the shit that I've seen. Yeah. Like... It gets cooked so quickly in that world. The beauty of the staring thing is that you don't have to get involved. It's not one of those ones where they come up to you. Oh, yeah. 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 Jesus. Now, if you Don't was... get me involved in the art. As an <laughs> artist, don't get me involved in your art. Uh, who dresses their kid in black and red? I've never seen a human being dress a child in a black dress and red shoes. Plenty of people. Just Google image it. Mm. Uh, he doesn't understand why the dress was repurposed from the sun. He's like, who puts their son in a dress? It's like... Yeah, people well, in the eighties when they had, could know how to sew, and babies yeah. are allowed to wear dresses. You can't just ear tasker it. Uh, he also notes that Azaria is the name of a moshav or like a settlement in Israel, mm-hmm. and that's very significant. Ah, uh, the Jews. Yeah, and he also it's very sus on the baby's name. I've never heard of a little baby named Azaria. Now, why might that be? Could something have happened that made Azaria not a popular baby name? Hmm. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, I looked up on like babynames.com yep. where they have like the trending charts of baby names. Azaria, very unpopular from the 80s through to the late 90s. Okay. Yeah. It's making and a comeback. Then it starts to pick up a bit. It's, you know, it's not a hugely popular one, but it took about 20 years for it to come back. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, What's, it's a pretty harsh sounding name. So yeah. like, I can, can't see it appealing to... A broad population. It's what's, not like Susan. What's the graph like on Adolf? <laughs> yeah, I think Adolf has not re- recovered. Yeah. Saddam. We'll see. We should be yeah. getting. We should be getting more kids called Saddam, right? Yeah, you would think about so. Now? It's about time. Yeah. He also made a big deal about not finding bones, mm. and he he his justification of that was even lions in the savanna can't eat, eat a, a skull. human skull yeah I saw they, that. they found out some poachers had been killed recently by lions and all they found were their shoes and their skulls it's like without wanting to be horrific and horrible a full-grown adult human skull compared to a nine-week-old baby skull mm. you, i don't think you can compare that i'm pretty confident a lion could break a skull as well yeah i looked twin to look it up but it was hard to find yeah he also said and i think this is the fucking dumbest bit of it uh, they blamed it on the dingo because it was an area where that had dingo problems, but a dingo had never taken a kid. Besides, of course, the one that had been taken a few mm, weeks yeah. earlier. Mm. Uh, there'd been a ca- then he says, there'd been a case two weeks earlier where a dingo tried to take a kid, and that's how they got away with this. So he just contradicts himself immediately. Yeah. Right. It's safe to say this person is not putting to forward a solid case. No. No. For their argument. But I feel like this is really good. This one might take off. Because, mm. yeah, Americans especially, their one touch point on this is, I think I ate my baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. And with the whole Pizzagate, Podesta, Abramovich thing, I think if anyone notices this little video, you're going know, to see this really incorporated into the narrative of Marina Abramovich. Mm. Mm. Do we get anything else on this? I did. Mm. So I was reading an article about... Uh, so like the, some of the media failings and uh, there was a mention of one of the conspiracies besides all of the seventh day Adventist stuff there was something called the AC theory which was based on the idea that there were a lot of words and phrases involved that had the letters A and C in sequence oh, yeah. so Azaria Chamberlain mm-hmm. the daughter of Alice Lynn Chamberlain, that was mm-hmm. uh, Lindy's full name, who was the daughter of Avis and Cliff. She was also the brother of Alex Murchison. Not the daughter of Cliff and Avis. Mm. No. no. 
Uh, Alex Murchison. So there is a C in the middle of yep, Murchison. Yeah, it's, it's a prominent C. Yeah. It's so we're a few words into this already. It's and they're already <laughs> just reaching. Uh, Azaria's uh, brother was Aiden Chamberlain, and there was also Reagan, which has an A in it, Chamberlain. Uh, the family had gone <laughs> from Alice Springs, so A and C in Alice, to Ayers Rock. Rock has a, a C in it. Yep. Uh, a few weeks earlier, uh, the Cranwell family had visited Ayers Rock and their daughter Amanda, so Amanda Cranwell, Whoa. had been attacked by a dingo. Jeez. <sighs> oh, dingoes don't attack people, though. <laughs> uh, one of the cops was James. Second letter A, Metcalf. Fourth letter C. Mm. And uh, there's an A in that too. The shithouse British uh, scientist, James Cameron, has an A and a C in it. Uh, and Professor Barry Boacher was involved. A, mm. guy, a journalist called Malcolm Brown, the A and the C, both in Malcolm there, uh, wrote about it. There was also someone called Frank Cole. Uh, this is something that came up a few years later, I think in the 2000s, this guy called Frank Cole popped up in the media saying that he had actually found the uh, the body mm. and that uh, they'd buried it and mm. placed the clothes down. Uh, I think it came out that he'd also claimed to be involved in some sort of other prominent case. Yeah, he's case. a famous crank, I believe. Right. Uh, there was also there was another uh, famous crank lady who popped up a few years ago saying that she was actually Azaria Chamberlain. Mm. Mm. Do we know what happened to her? Uh, she was not. She was okay. <laughs> just mentally ill. But uh, according to this article, uh, the word game got a bit boring for most people, except for one person called Tony Painter from Sydney who came up with a whole theory about it. Mm. Uh, and he apparently sent it off to James Cameron, the scientist in the UK, who said it was most interesting and he would be delighted to keep it for his personal file. Now, in the article, it's sort of throwing shade on this dodgy British scientist. Yeah. I feel like maybe he was just being polite. Yes. Because I did do Mm. a bit of research into Tony Painter after this, and this AC thing was not his only interest in the Azaria Chamberlain case. Right. I found a submission he made to the Productivity Commission in the late 90s about cross-media ownership laws. And he actually has a far more elaborate theory about what the Azaria Chamberlain case was about. Mm. Plus ABC. ABB. Mm. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yep. Oh, sorry, what? <laughs> so his theory about the Azaria Chamberlain case. Firstly, he, he this submission to the Productivity Commission is one you've really got to read from top to bottom. Okay. I made a mistake. I started yeah. reading the top, which was all about uh, Kerry Packer and Rupert Murdoch. Yep. Packer. I see. Yep. yep. Are colluding to uh, weaken Australia's cross media ownership laws. Yeah, that's probably Which pretty... is probably true. Yep. Yep. He makes some prescient observations about uh, Kerry Packer's desire to own Fairfax. Mm. Uh, Channel 9 recently took over Fairfax, mm. making a lot of what he's saying sort of true. Uh, but yeah, he had his suggestion to the Productivity Commission was that uh, there shouldn't be a distinction between old media like newspapers, television and radio, and new media like internet things when it came to cross-media ownership laws. Because up until relatively recently, you could, if you owned like a newspaper in one city, you could also own the television station in the city. Mm, mm. That's all been weakened thanks to uh, the crossbench senators mm. uh, caving in on that. So our media landscape is much less diverse now. But he, this uh, Tony Painter, predicted that the internet was going to be a big thing, mm. and that we shouldn't, we should treat it the same way as we treat everything else. So the internet news was not dominated by people who also had control of other things. Mm, mm. Anyway, uh, he suggests that Kerry Packer and Rupert Murdoch were colluding secretly together on this. Uh, that one of the things they would do is attack the ABC to make it uh, weaker, so that they could have more stuff. Which has also came to pass. Oh, and also, um, the Azaria Chamberlain was murdered to distract us yeah. from all of this. Right. So, 
Uh, he reckons that Michael Chamberlain discovered a world first computer script that laid out the bl- blueprint for what he had to do. Where did he find it? He just he, somehow he developed it. A blueprint for how to what how to murder a baby. It was a computer programmable novel manuscript. Uh, told him how to murder the baby and how to cover it up. Right. Uh, Didn't do a good job because they got done. The t- ten word key card he had was Ayers Rock, Northern Territory, Central Australia, Southern Hemisphere, World Universe. Now, I wish I could tell you what any of this meant, but in his 60-page submission to the Productivity Commission, even though he does include several letters he wrote to, or several faxes, I should say, he sent to Senator Natasha Stott Despoyer about how his friend had been murdered uh, and Nettie Smith had uh, stopped him from working as a waiter at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Uh, He he did not include the 30-page summary of the solution to the Azaria mystery. But he does go through every single significant crime from the 1980s through to the 1990s and how they all relate to Kerry Packer and Rupert Murdoch uh, diluting the media industry. That's probably fair enough. But he does say Senator Natasha Stott Despoyer knows all about it. Oh. So, Natasha, if you're out there listening, let us know if you remember this. He does also have a complaint a long way up in the thing that uh, he didn't get a reply to his 82 page fax from Natasha Stott Despoyer. And he's concerned that she's becoming a media darling. And that's why she's not focusing on the big issues. Yeah. The bloody thermal roll of paper probably just ran out after like <laughs> 70 pages. He might have uh, tried to fax the phone number and got it wrong. Yeah. Didn't realise. He does. Um, he reminds me of the PDFs are like long book sky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> because he's, his submission sort of has a bunch of different submissions rolled in. And he notes a bunch of times about how many submissions to government inquiries he's done over the years. This is... A, He's like 76th submission to his 34th inquiry. Jeebus. So he's doubling up on a lot of inquiries. Yeah, yeah. And he does also, he he faxes. He sends hard copies by post. And he also sends uh, 3.5 millimeter diskettes by post. Mm. By both regular and registered mail to ensure they arrive. And in the notes of this submission, he says, I will submit my submission by the date of it closing but I will also be sending further material after the closing date because you haven't given me enough time. (laughs) Anything else on the Chamberlains? Oh, it's just, it was really frustrating to read it because I mean, I studied the case in legal studies back in high school. Gee, what sort of fancy high school did you go to? I did legal studies too. Oh, okay. I just went to a shit high school. (laughs) (laughs) Did you go to private school? Yeah. I went to public school. Yeah, okay. You just had like geography and shit? No, yeah, I didn't do geography. Yeah, right. It wasn't very good. So I knew that like an injustice had been done. Yeah. But I don't know. I didn't, guess I didn't really comprehend like how much evidence there was from the very, very, very beginning that it was a dingo. Yeah. It was, mm. There was really not any question. It was just like this dumb Keystone cop got the idea in his head. And then when the case was taken over, he had all these... Notes that just cast doubt on everything. Mm. There was so much evidence that it was a dingo. Could it have been a bunyip? Oh, that was one other thing, actually, I saw. Uh, just in a YouTube comment, someone said, you know, the Australian Bigfoot uh, often goes on all fours. Yeah. It could have just been mistaken for a dingo. Mm. It's like, yeah, maybe it was a Bigfoot. Maybe it was a fucking dingo, yeah. you yeah. dingus. Ma- maybe it was something that no one's ever actually seen yeah. or something that someone said a lot of and yeah. saw on the night. Yeah. But yeah, they saw dingoes there. They saw a dingo running away. The whole idea that she was supposed to have gone and killed the baby in the car and then while everyone's looking for the baby, she just ducks off to hide it somewhere yeah. and then mm. they don't find it. And also no one saw her covered in blood or anything as well. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it was a panther. Yeah, it could have been. And they saw the dingo running away because it was like, oh shit, there's a panther. Maybe. I was about to go have a munch on their leftover barbecue. Oh, there's panther around. <laughs> yeah. Panther could carry a baby. It depends, really. 
Yeah, sure. It's shaped like a bucket of sand. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, just the idea that a dingo was incapable of doing it. Because that's what I always remember from... What I remember about the Azaria Chamberlain case from growing up, this is before I did the legal studies, is when the Jade Unleski thing happened. Do you remember that one? This was in Maui. Uh, we won't do an episode about this. Uh, it was like the the modern... This was in the 90s. It was like the modern day right. Azaria Chamberlain case where everyone had an opinion. They either thought she did it or didn't do it. That's what I knew about the Azaria Chamberlain case. Yeah. What I've sort of discovered is researching this is everyone just thought she did it. <laughs> there was so much evidence that she didn't. Yeah. I think I probably thought that she did it all this time or that there was some, you know. Something nefarious about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I know, and just because I'd never looked into it, but you've seen all the media, you've seen all the piss taking out of her line, all the mm. Meryl Streep line. So you just assume yeah, maybe everyone else knows more than me. Mm. Turns out they don't. Mm. But yeah, it's just the uh, two things that jumped out at me were Australians for all of their talk of you know being rebels, being you know the the Aussie larrikin founded by convicts, yeah. convict spirit. Uh, the minute like a cop says something, yep, definitely <laughs> fucking love cops. <laughs> and this especially our cops called Officer Dingo. <laughs> <laughs> they love cops in their cute fuzzy ears. Yeah, and they love to just like the the authorities in this case, not just the cops, but like the so called experts who. Mm found the blood that wasn't there and came up with this theory about how a dingo couldn't peel something out of some baby clothing. Mm. Yeah. They just love to acquiesce to authority in any opportunity. That was really frustrating. Speaking of fuzzy dingoes, another little dingo fact for yep. you. Great. Domestic dogs, you know how they have like uh, little bald bellies? Yep. Dingoes have fur, covers their entire belly. Ooh, a bit of modesty. Yeah. Bloody full rug. Yeah, right. And also, normal dog's rib cage only comes like sort of part way down its body. Yeah. Dingo's rib cage goes almost the full length of its body, protects all its organs. Yeah. From bloody kangaroo strikes. Ah. Mm. The unfortunate that it, part of that is they can't suck their own dicks. Well, yeah. They're like fucking, they, they need to get other dingoes to lick their yeah. balls. They need to get their prince surgery. Yeah. So they can suck my own dick. But they can dislike. Partly dislocate all their legs. Right. And super, like, super stretch them out. Seems like an unnecessary superpower. Well, no, because then they can get into little spots. And the dingo's widest part of its body is its head. Mm. So if its head can get in something, the dingo can get in it. Jeebus. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah. They're well, cool much, animals. Yeah, mate, check out this bloody dingo sanctuary. Yeah. What does it cost? Uh, it was like 50 bucks. You go out there, it's like an hour. They talk for an hour about them. Then yep. you go play with them for an hour. They have like you sit on the ground and they just come and like pile on you. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, that sounds great. Yeah. But I guess the other frustrating thing. Oh, here we go. Is that it took fucking what thirty years for them to sort it out? Mm. Yeah. Like they got a million dollars or something in compo in the nineties, which apparently wasn't even enough to cover their legal fees. Yeah, mm. but like it just one of the quotes when they were like trying to get things overturned when it was so obvious that they were innocent after they'd been found guilty. Mm. Uh, like the police minister or someone was talking to a journo. He said, look, if this, if Southerners are going to kick up a fuss about this, guaranteed it'll be another six months before we can get her out. It's this fucking dumb Northern Territory thing. They're like, oh, <laughs> the, the Southerners sticking their noses in our business. It's like, you're not even a real state. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If people want to find us online, they can do so at various websites, hypotheticalinstitute.com, hypothepod.com, cookedunits.com for our Redbubble site. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher, mm-hmm. wherever you get your podcasts. Yep. If you've got a little podcasting app that's not one of those, you can mm. still find us. Yep. You can leave us a rating and a review mm. if you can. If you're listening and you haven't given us a review, you should do that. Yeah, good take, advice. Take a couple of minutes and just write something nice or something horrible if you don't like if you yeah. don't like it. But why are you listening? Yeah, you made it this far. Fucking tool bag. Yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna put something horrible, make it about Robbo. Yeah. I, uh, I can stand it. I've got a thick skin. You can also find us on Facebook and uh, we're on iTunes at twittercom slash Like a rhino. Uh, Robbo, where can they find you, mate? You can get me at Ale of a Time, Ale of a Time dot com. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to plug. You have a book. Oh, you buy the book, which is 
keg keg bottle can. Yep. And Perfect all... for father. Like if you're a bad kid. No, it's good for Christmas. Get your bloody early Christmas present. Yeah. Or um, if you haven't, you know, if you haven't seen your dad yet. Yeah. yeah. Quickly pop down to the bookshop and grab it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good Christmas present for dads, mums, uncles, auntie. Anyone over the age of 18 will love it. Yeah. You know, I was in the post you know, office. People under 18 love to drink as well, right? It's yeah, but I don't, I don't... I was in the post office recently and there was a bunch of books in there and I was like, is Robbo's book in the post office? Yeah. Because I always remember hearing when I did music industry business that some of the best-selling CDs are usually ones that you can buy in the post office. Yeah, Because people yeah. are in there and they're just like, heaps of people use the post office. Oh, uh, yeah, I love... And they're like, I can buy a CD. In the post office at Footscray the other day... They've got a vinyl section. <laughs> I thought you were going to say my book was in there. No, I couldn't The, the, the I couldn't excitement see it. in your voice. No, I couldn't no. see it. They've got okay. like a vinyl. You can go into the post office yeah, and just peruse cool. some vinyls. Wait, the one on Barclay Street? Yeah. That's sick. I, don't, I haven't seen that yet. The one, yeah, Barclay. Uh, is not, it Barclay? Not across. Yeah, 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 not across, across from, from French from, Baguette. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. All right. All right. Good, great. I'm glad we got that into the yeah. podcast. Yeah. Uh, Salty, where can they find you besides uh, Barclay Street Post Office? Across this from, yeah, right. across from keep, the French Baguette Cafe. Well, let's keep this on topic. We don't yeah. want to hear about... Uh, we well, want people to know where they can pick up sweet vinyl at inflated prices and get some really sick bun mees. Yeah, get a good bun mee across at French Baguette. Don't, don't think it is bad because it looks like a weird place. It's a good place. It's a good place. And don't pull a Salty... And put down a dollar less than uh, you're supposed to. And just walk out. <laughs> don't, don't rip them off. No. They're lovely there. Um, you can find me at, at Saltmarsh on Twitter and Instagram. Andrew Saltmarsh Illustration on Facebook. Check out Toyota and Patreon if you want. You can find me at Sex and Hymer on Twitter and gather around me on Facebook and iTunes for my other podcast. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye. Don't worry. About a thing Except if all our world leaders are alien reptilians I said don't worry About a thing Except maybe the fluoride in our water supply contains mind-altering drugs Don't worry About a thing Except whether or not Port Arthur was a false flag operation in which to disarm Australia. I said, don't worry about a thing. I accept. You can definitely hear John Lennon say, I buried Paul at the end of Strawberry Fields forever. Ooh, don't worry about a thing. Except not only did Bush do 9 11, but he also keeps the planes out in Area 51, which. Let's not forget where all the aliens are.